Ethan Crimmins with 3D Weather, if you want to come on up here. I'll hand you the, the remote and you can go ahead and get started. Thank you. Can you just introduce yourself? Good morning. I'm Ethan Crimmins. Weather affects all of aviation and in some cases, uh, which occur about twice per month, maybe once per week, it leads to a fatality. The unmanned aircraft fleet is already growing exponentially and is going to far surpass the manned aircraft fleet size. And if the accident rate stays the same, it's going to be astronomical. The reason this is happening is that U.S. meteorological infrastructure only covers 3% of the U.S. It was built for airports where aircraft depart and land and the high altitudes they cruise at, but nowhere else. The competition is building very complex ATM management programs that are new to the industry and difficult for the novice uh, controllers in the states to uh, manage. And in a way, uh, this analogy, these guys are building Ferraris, very complex machines, and they're trying to sell them to student drivers. So why not start with the simple solution? What we're introducing here is a unmanned aircraft uh, traffic management system that is very simple. Um, it provides the three critical criteria for FAA regulatory compliance, which is vehicle to weather deconfliction, vehicle to ground deconfliction, vehicle to vehicle deconfliction, all in a graphical, visual graphical format with a lot uh, without the clutter that the competitors have. This is a, a screenshot of that visual output. If you know the um, game Minecraft, this is basically using that same, same type of optimization, but for the atmosphere. Uh, the technology is live, it's working, it's mobile, and it's available nationally. Um, in addition to addressing the FAA regulatory criteria, it does uh, have another big uh, benefit, and that's it allows states to foster and grow the unmanned aircraft industry. So FedEx, UPS, Amazon, a lot of these logistics companies are moving in this direction, and this technology aids them. Um, we're very lucky. I'm very lucky. Ohio is leading the nation with setting this trend. Um, this is the home of the Wright brothers. We owe it to the uh, not only the nation, but also the world to set an example and take the lead with this. And what you're looking at here is a document that Ohio just delivered a couple weeks ago, and our company is actually listed in this document. Um, the National AAM uh, Center is being built in Springfield, Ohio. That's the airport just east of Dayton. It's about an hour north of here. That's the building. It's under construction now, and our office is approximately where that uh, arrow is pointing, and they're going to have vertiports. Even if you're not into aviation and you happen to be in the area, it's a great place to go see. And some of the OEMs you see in the top right-hand side, Beta, Joby, Lyft, are all going to have uh, facilities there. This is a quick synopsis of the accomplishments we've uh, made so far. So we've gotten about a million dollars in funding between the state of Ohio, the Air Force, and the FAA. We're listed in the NASA Community MOU. So that's an umbrella document that uh, NASA is using to configure this new industry for the US. Uh, we have the FAA and the Air Force as tech partners. We're included in that Fly Ohio document we just talked about. Uh, we got three university partners that have signed on, OSU, OU, and Purdue. And we just signed an enterprise license agreement with the state of Ohio. Um, we have one in the works with Indiana, and we'll get to where that's going here in a second. And then we have a, other, a couple of other projects in the pipeline. Um, what you see in the green is our primary target market, and then what you see in the red is the stepping stone to getting there. There's some other uh, adjacent markets that are sizable. We'll go after those in time, but we're not going to take our eye off the ball. We're going to stick to the knitting, which is uh, this, I think, three-step process here of getting there, which is develop a relationship with each state's DOT, um, work into, uh, sell them on the 3D weather, the output that we just showed you, which is ready to go. It's live right now uh, and get some discretionary funds. And that leads to the state operating budget, which are sizable even for the smaller states. 
The technology uh, is not just the software, it's also some hardware. And what you see down there, LON, Low Altitude Weather Network, is what the universities and the Air Force has collaborated on. Um, what you're looking at is an older uh, prototype version, but we have this operational at Springfield. It's delivering data, uh, which addresses some of the gap that I showed on that third screen in. Um, I'd like to say thank you to Mark Chalmers and the team here who did do a fantastic job put in some work to get us moving in that direction of engaging with the state DOTs. In conclusion, I uh, wanna thank everybody for their time. I'm here looking for an EIR. I am overloaded, I need some help, and uh, it's that expertise that could greatly benefit this endeavor. Thank you.